my wife been married a long time. And there's been times where some of her guys paid more than me. I was the biggest cheerleader. I was like, go get it. I, I was happy for that. And then I was like, I've seen other people in relationships where they have this jealousy, like they competing and stuff. Mm-hmm. And I was told, I was told, told them people, you're crazy. So when the bills start hitting you in the head, then you wish that you had that. Yeah, like, that's you right. Know, I mean, God bless your wife to make more money. He's still blessing y'all unions. Mm-hmm. You're supposed to be one. Yes. But you know what, though, D, I'm going to say this. People argue about the silliest things and, 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 matter, and it don't even make any sense to argue over those things. Or the husband, sometimes be the husband, sometimes be the wife. And it be stuff that don't even make no sense. And the only one that's smiling is the enemy. Mm-hmm. He's the only one smiling about it. So we. I've experienced it where the couple I'm talking about, it wasn't even them. It was because they was running their mouth with other people, getting other people in their stuff, and they the ones they caused them to be in an argument. And people, other people who don't have no sense of what marriage is, talking about crazy stuff. Well, how did she make more money than you, man? How do you, how that make you feel? I'd be like, it make me feel great. That's right. <laughs> more money. Mm-hmm. Amen. 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 Don't even want money. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and the thing about it, deep, what you just said made so sad because the guy was like, "You don't mind your wife making more money than you?" I said, "No." What's wrong with that? I be like, I be calling her job, telling him to give her a raise. <laughs> <laughs> that's how many times I said that. Give him a raise, make him chew. I don't care how many raise. You know, I think when when my wife made more money, she come home smiling and say. Honey, they gave me another raise. I said, thank you, Jesus. For those that are joining Facebook Live, we got cut off, but we're back on. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're talking about what's this thing called love. Um, Love is overplayed on Valentine's Day. Yes, it is. We just learned that $19 million is spent on Valentine's Day. Mm -hmm. $19 million. But when effort is put along all year long to give to your spouse, to give to your mate, to give to your fiance, to give to your companion, when you're doing it all year long, guess what? I ain't got to spend as much money on Valentine's Day. (laughs) Doesn't that sound good? That I'm giving flowers during the week. So when we show this appreciation throughout the year, Valentine's Day won't be such a big deal. Like our anniversary, me and my husband, Many times we don't even exchange gifts. Mm -hmm. Why? Because we celebrate each other all year long. We make sure that on Friday nights that um, we have our date nights every week. We haven't done it lately because of his surgery and the fasting and everything. But um, we make sure that we appreciate each other. So when the big holidays come, we don't have to fork out all this money because we always do it. And we're happy just enjoying each other. I see you, Noel. We're happy just enjoying each other. Amen. So we've got to, um, the question was, because we're coming from 1 Corinthians 13, uh, verses 4 through 8. Nish, God bless you. We see you. Amen. And it begins to say, love is patient and kind. It endures long. Love suffers long. So you know what that means? When times are hard, we are suffering together. I'm not running. I'm not trying to hide because you're going through an affliction. Like my husband just had surgery. So what that meant, I had to put on another hat and I was a nurse. I had to bandage his bandage twice a day. It just closed this past weekend to God be the glory. But we operate in different functions as our assignment calls with the one that God has ordained us to be with. So because he had back surgery, I'm not going to spend three weeks away. Oh, I can't handle it. I'm going into depression. Oh, I can't handle it. No, I'm standing as a spouse as I should at what we say, our vows for better or for worse, for richer or for poor. So to death do us part. So I'm standing and standing ground. And that's what we do. We do that because of love. Love is a strong affection that will not fail even when times get hard, will not fail even when the enemy is attacking us, will not fail even when we fall into financial difficulties. Love will not fail. 
So we got to continue to push. We got to continue to press as a couple. It's not jealousy. It's not um, vainglorious. Um, 1 Corinthians 13 and 5 says, love is not rude. It does not demand its own way. Mm. It is not irritable mm -hmm. and it keeps no record of wrong. Mm. That's love. So that means let's deal with this. We got to break this up because this is some deep stuff. Love is not rude. Mm. So I should not be able to say all manner of things to my spouse, calling out his name, calling him out of his character mm. saying things that i know that's really it just it's not becoming of a lady i should not do those things because why i love this man i adore and that's how we are in our relationship as couples when we love the one that we are with how can we be rude to them mm. it don't demand to have its own way <laughs> it mm. is not rude and does not act unbecoming it don't insist on its own rights. It don't insist, I've got to have my way or it's no way. That's not love. Love is compromise. Love is sitting down talking and coming into agreement to say, wait a minute, I, let's see. I, I'm, we're not meeting eye to eye, but let's just talk about this so we can get on the same let's page see. and we meet at a common ground. I'm not going to give it because it's not my idea, because it's not my opinion that I'm going to smash down anything that he has to say. No, I'm going to, let's sit down. Let's get a common ground. Let's see, let's talk this out. Let's work this through. And this is what we've got to do. That's love. Love is not irritable, not resentful. Mm. And I want to say this for the male, you know, us too, a lot of times we get irritable we don't, you know, some some of the time we don't know how to talk because we already upset. We already thinking about stuff we need to do. But you always got to consider your wife and consider her feelings, too, and treating her as such as your queen. That's still your queen. And I always say this, and I'll say it again. You know, it's a way that you treat your queen that you tr don't treat. And you don't treat anybody else but her like that because that's the woman that you marry. That's the one you say you I do to. You, that's the one you stood up there and you said, I, I will take her as my wife. I will move mm -hmm. in with her. I would mm -hmm. be with her. I would uh, uh, protect her. I would. And she's looking for that. She's looking for you to be that protector. She's looking for you that the one she can go to and say, honey, this happened and, and want to vent to and tell you all of the things she's been through. Mm -hmm. And she should be that one you can go to and talk to. Yes. If you cannot talk to your wife, how are you going to stay married? And talking to your wife, we know women. Let me take off my glasses for this. No. Uh -oh. We have our little mood swings. Uh, time of the month, we don't want to be bothered. But guess what? This is someone that we are in this for life. We've got to come out. I see you. Yes, we are. We we are. We can be something else now. Mm. Um, I can talk about it because I'm a woman. He can't talk about it. I can't. Mm. <laughs> we can be something else. But that ain't love. And then we go, oh, you know, it's my time of the month. No, 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 no. That is not love. Especially when you have a man that will rub your back when you cramping. Come on now. We've got to appreciate the ones that we are with mm -hmm. and not let our mood swing. Is somebody on the conference call trying to come forth? Come on. We ain't leaving you out. Those that are on the conference call, please, if you have any comments and you want to uh, pose a question, just unmute your phone and come forth. Those that are on Facebook, we see you. We thank you for joining us yes, today. Yes. If you have a comment, you can write your comment or a question, and we'll make sure that we share it on tonight. Love does not keep a record of being wrong. So that means that when we're upset, mm -hmm. who's that coming for? Come on. When we're upset, I'm not throwing in your face mm. something that I said that I forgave you for. Mm -hmm. I'm not throwing in your face because I'm mad and I'm upset. Something that happened in the past. 
But guess what? We've moved on. So if we moved on, it shouldn't take me to be emotional distraught for me to bring up something that we should have moved on from. That mm -hmm. is not love. Not love, love does not keep the record of wrong. Mm -hmm. It takes no account of evil to it. It pays no attention to a suffered wrong. So of course, if something happened where my husband caught me in wrong, it's not for him when we get mad and upset that we're throwing that in each other's face. Mm -hmm. Come on now, love is forgiveness. Look at the many times Jesus had to forgive us. Look at the many of times that we offended God and we had to go to God for forgiveness. But here it is, our spouse. Here it is, our fiance. Here it is, the person that I say I want to spend the rest of my life with. And I can't move past something that happened in the past. So we've got to let the past be the past or we'll never move forward in our relationship mm. because we're always bringing and pulling each other into the past. If you've forgiven me, and I heard um, uh, um, Elder Beverly say this on today on the prayer line, if you've forgiven me, that don't mean that you're going to forget it, but you've learned how to deal and cope with it. And you've understood that God has forgiven me. And who are you that you can't forgive? Mm. Glory to God. We're not going to forget it. We're going to move on. But guess what? I'm not going to throw it in your face either. Every opportunity that I yeah. get. Mm -hmm. Why? Because I love you. Mm -hmm. And love does not keep the record of wrong. Mm. If the shoe was on the other foot and we were the offender, it wouldn't feel good that something that I've done and I've asked your forgiveness and we prayed about and we've talked about and then the same thing is thrown up in my, come on, we've got to mature and we've got to mature in love. We've got to mature and know that God is love. We've got to mature and know that although it's arguments, although there's fighting, that we've got to um, go together and harmony as one. As one. As you one. Want to and I, I want to say this too about what my wife just said. You know, um, sometimes, you know, as a man, you know, we've made mistakes. And the worst thing that you want, your, you want to come home and hear uh, your wife talking about the mistake that you made that you already apologized for. And you already said, can you just forgive me for what I did wrong? Even if you didn't pay uh, the light bill and the lights got cut off from, uh, you know, if you could forgive him for cheating or if you could forgive him for for something he said or something he did and, and you, you and he really felt already bad about what he did and what he said or whatever the situation may be, we got to learn. Um, how to forgive, you know, and know that my, I heard my wife say, like, Jesus forgave us. Mm -hmm. And how many times, every time you think about getting mad and bringing that up again, how many times you have messed up in God's eyesight? Mm -hmm. You have sinned. You have done things that were wrong, but you expect God to forgive you, but you can't forgive nobody else. Not at just nobody else, the one that, that you, you love, love. <laughs> that we say that, that we I love, do too. yes, yeah, and the one that you may be pending, and I do. Mm -hmm. So, because we know as Christians, every relationship we're not dating just to date, but this is potential marriage, this is potential mm -hmm. commitment. Mm -hmm. And if we're not yet married, and I can't forgive you, if we're not married, and we're having these issues. We can't even go into marriage until we've gotten this right because whatever we bring in as baggage will remain baggage. So we've got to make sure that we resolve any issues, any um, things that are stopping us from moving forth and going forward. I have a, a question for um, from Sister Coray and her question is from her and her husband. So we have heard couples say my money, my money, his money, or my account, um, his account. We just want to know how it's supposed to work as a married couple. 
Oh, we wow. don't separate money, but was just curious about how vets may handle finances within a marriage. Oh, good question. Mm. Divided money. Divided money? <laughs> I never heard of that. <laughs> when, hey, mean? when we join together in marriage, mm. holy matrimony, um, the scriptures say that the husband leave his mother and cleave mm. to his wife. Yes. And we become one. Does his money clean with him? His money, I think, don't stay with his mama. No, it don't stay with his mama. Him, right? and they become one. They become one. So, you know, I've even heard people say, oh, I'm saving money for a rainy day. I never know uh, about what this, you know, in case of one day. In case of one day what? You, do you have to mm. leave the marriage? In case of one day you have to flee? In case mm. of one day right there we're speaking over our marriage, marriage that is not going to work. And the devil is hearing you. Yes. And say, you know what? I can work with that one. And he uses devices. Mm -hmm. So if he see that I'm hiding money over here, and when it comes time for something happen, an emergency. Now, mm. I already told my spouse, you know, we've got an, a joint account. But guess what? I got my little account on the side. Woo! I'm putting my money up for a rainy day. Mm -hmm. And But my spouse don't know about it. Why mm. wouldn't my spouse know about it? When I want to know what accounts he had, come on now. Mm. I, I want to know <laughs> what's going on. So what me and my husband did in his accounts, he had it, added me to his accounts and I added him to my account. And we even have account that we open together as joint accounts. Mm -hmm. So when we are married, we're not even money because, you know, for the love of money is the root of all evil. Oh, yeah. That doesn't mean that God don't want his saints to be prosperous. Uh, we're prospering together as a couple. Mm -hmm. We're prospering together as one. So as we prosper, whenever we try to do something on the side, the enemy try to use it against us. Yeah. Um, use it. Okay, then I'll sneak and go buy this. Oh, I'm going to shopping and do this. And he like, wait a minute. I thought we didn't have no money. Mm -hmm. and then he asked him, wait, how you was able to get this? And he called a lie. Oh, somebody gave, oh, see, we leaving room for the enemy mm -hmm. to come in to come because in. now we don't want to admit that we have this account on the side. We don't want to admit that, you know, we got some extra money. So, you know, now here's the enemy coming to play. So guess what? Where I was sneaking, now I'm lying mm. because I don't want you to know I have this account. So I'm sneaking, I'm lying. I got this extra stuff that I got going on and here go the enemy just coming in and he's using it as mm. tools and as instruments. So we've got to make sure that <clears throat> in every device that the enemy tried to use and to answer your question, this is for the Jones. Yes. Um, ben and Corey, uh, our money is managed together. So am I trying to get my own account? I might have my own account, but guess what? My husband name is on my own account, so that ain't my own. Um, huh? No, because we became one. Yeah. So if we're one, like we're that. one in everything. Because becoming one in everything does not leave room for the enemy to come in. I, I just want to say this one thing, and this is to Corinne and um, just to everybody: the biggest thing in your marriage is you cannot have secrets. Mm. Secrets, believe me, the enemy is watching. He knows your secrets. And he's going to take that and use it against you. Yes. It's better just to, when you, when you, I love how me and my wife, when we first got married, before we got married, we already planned it. We knew mm -hmm. how we was going to be. I'm, I told her everything about me. She told me everything about her. And we left it as that mm -hmm. because why? We don't want no secrets. And any I had a, somebody asked me, a man asked me, you tell your wife everything? Yes, I tell my wife everything. There's nothing I don't hide. I don't hide nothing from my wife. Mm -hmm. She knows everything about me. She knows everything that I do. She she can look at my phone anytime she wants. She can go on my email. She can go on my know Facebook. Know the lock code. And know the lock code and, and all that. Lies. I don't hide nothing. There's nothing hidden. And I think that's the best way to do it, men and women, because mm -hmm. when you hide stuff, sooner or later, whatever you do in the dark, you'll we'll come, come to, to the light. light. Yes. yes. And just because you tell your girlfriend, don't believe one day it might slip out.
in front of your man. <laughs> so don't think that you got it all covered. Now, mind you, I don't go looking through his phone. I'm not like that jealous type mm -hmm. to go see. Um, nothing like that. And thank God for that. He doesn't do that to me as well. No. Um, but remember, wherever we leave opportunity for the enemy, he will come in. So we don't leave room for him. We don't leave room for him. Everything should be done as one. Right. Um, remember those that are on the conference call. If you have any questions or comments, come forth. We like interaction. Um, we thank God for those that signed in on Facebook. Glad that you were able to join. Um, if you have questions or comments, you can post. Mm -hmm. And um, any questions, we'll make sure that we address. We're covering 1 Corinthians, the 13th chapter. We're at the 6th verse, and it says, It does not... And we're talking about love. Love does not rejoice about injustice, mm. but rejoices whenever the truth is out. Mm. Um, this is the Amplified Version. It does not rejoice at injustice and unrighteousness, but rejoices when right and truth prevail. So when we love each other, we're walking together in righteousness. Mm. And if our spouse is not living right, if our spouse is not um, going in the same direction that we're going through as far as salvation, it is, our, I love him. So if I love him, I'm going to say, baby, you know what? Um, why don't you come to church with me? Oh, baby, no, that's not the way that you should do that. Mm -hmm. Let's look at it in scripture because I don't want unrighteousness to prevail. Mm. And when we know that our spouse, our spouse or our companion is doing something that is wrong, that is in a direct contradiction to the word of God, we have a responsibility as the spouse, as fiance, as if you're courting and um, for a possibility of marriage, it is our responsibility to say, wait a minute, let's grab the word of God. Let's see what the word of God say. When we don't say anything, we are a partaker in it. Mm. We are a partaker. And then guess what's happening? Unrighteousness and injustice is prevailing. Mm. So I should be able to say, let us pray. Let Let's us pray this spirit out of here. Let's pray this, you know, this habit out of here. Let's pray this stronghold out of here. And what greater thing is it that I can join together with my husband and we can pray with one of four. See, that's what the enemy don't like. The enemy is coming to destroy marriages. Could, could you imagine if it ever come to a day that you and your spouse or companion are on the same page and you're binding and you're rebuking and you're casting down and you're pulling and plucking out. If it ever comes to the day that you're completely one in the spirit realm, can you imagine what force it is that you ought to be reckoned with? Mm. Could you imagine things just falling in line and in place because you are walking in total agreement? Could you imagine the stronghold and the devils that have to flee because you have the spirit of oneness? Mm. That's why the scriptures say two are better than one. Mm. Glory to God. That's why the enemy comes in to steal, kill, and destroy. Because if he can cause confusion, if he can cause discord, if he can cause mayhem within a husband and wife, then he got us. Ooh, he got wow. us. Why? Because now we don't want the bed angry. Yeah. But look, we in love. How we in love? <laughs> we in love, but we going to bed angry. angry. Our back turned to each other. We sleep, we mad. We plan like we sleep, but we mad. Man. So we've got to make sure that in every area of our life, we don't give the devil opportunity. Why? Because I love you. That's what this thing called love is. It's about obeying the scripture and knowing the scripture and putting it as a part of our life that is not on the back burner, but because it's so evident in our life, Love should be oozing everywhere. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yes, love should be oozing everywhere. I see a question. Does anyone have a comment? We have the um, those that are on conference call. You can unmute your phone and come forth. What is the question? 
The question is, do you agree with getting back with exes? <laughs> or should an ex stay an ex forever? Mm. Well, we were exes. We were exes. <laughs> were we my, exes? Yes, we were exes. So my husband and I, uh, we were high school sweethearts. Uh, so when he went the way to play football for Ohio State, uh, we decided, no, he dumped me. He, uh, you know, okay. <laughs> we came to a mutual agreement that um, the, the miles and the distance and the years that he would be gone would be too long. Too long. And, you know, we didn't want to hold each other bound in a relationship mm -hmm. when we was young. I mean, we were young. Yes. So he went away to college and we did not, at first we were communicating. But then, you know, the communication stopped. We moved on with our lives. Um, he came back from college uh, looking for me. Well, he wasn't bold enough to come to my house because he knew where I lived at. He was sneaking in and out, so he knew where I lived. Um, but when he looked old. <laughs> so, okay, we'll go past that. <laughs> so... Um, he came looking for me, but uh, someone told him that I was married, but I wasn't. So years go by. Um, 24 years later, this is no contact at all. Uh, we're in a church service. I went to support a pastor friend of mine, and he went to support his bishop that was preaching at the service that, that afternoon. It was a Sunday afternoon, and we saw each other, and we reconnected. So is it, do I, we agree with exes getting back together? We were exes. Right. And, um, you know, when love is there, time had gone by. So yes, we had to um, get to know each other again. But you know what? It felt, it was comfortable. Mm -hmm. And I remember after being single, I'm telling you, for 10 years, I was terrified of going into a relationship because it's, you got to learn that person over again. So I was happy just being single. You can ask my members. I was hardcore. You know, we all, we ain't no, I was so bad. I was wearing a ring on my finger so nobody would talk to me. That's how bad I was. I was hardcore. And because I had one failed marriage, marrying out of flesh, I'm not proud enough to admit it, um, to not admit it, but married out of flesh, didn't even last a year. That was not the husband God had for me, but I was wrong. I'm going to do what I want to do. And um, it did not work. So my thing was God is going to have to slam me, shake me up and say, this is your husband in order for me to get married. And I remember God condemned me like, why are you wearing that on your ring finger? And I used to always say, well, if he a man of God, he'll know I'm not married, although I have on a ring. And I remember walking in Walmart one day and the Lord say, isn't he human? Why wouldn't he like turn his head because he see a ring on your finger? And I was condemned and I took it off. I remember even telling my members I had to take the ring off. I put it on the other hand, but I took it off. So, you know, whom God has for us, um, even if it is an ex. I know a person that her and her ex broke up. He broke up with her and they just got married a couple of weeks ago after being separated. So who it is that God has for us, I'm not gonna say, oh, because we had bad times or bad experiences, uh, we got back together. It wasn't even six months, well, it was six months later, we were married and we had different ones saying, oh, it's been so long, well, you should wait. And it's been so many years, y'all should date a year and get to know each other. But when you are connected, and you feel that this is the one that God has for you, what I have to wait a year for? Mm -hmm. And we didn't care what nobody thought. Nobody. And we ain't gonna even say the higher ups who even had their own comments that look, nine years later, this year would be nine years that we've been married. So exes can work if that ex is in God's plan. Has it been happening? Oh, we've been happily married. Oh, you know that. Team Reese. <laughs> <laughs> You know, <laughs> but I know I'm, I'm gonna say this that you know I had I before I even met seen my wife at that church service even before I seen her there uh, a year and a half before that I wrote a letter and I and my I never forget my bishop at the time told me write this letter 
stating how you want her to look, stating how you want her to be, stating, you know, the kind of woman you want in your life. Mm -hmm. And I can say this, that after I wrote that letter and he told me to pray over it for seven days, uh, and then after that, tear it up and throw it away. And he said, give it to God and tear it up and throw it away. And I did that. And the thing that was so funny about it, God, to the detail, God already knew what I wanted. And that's why I knew God put her in my, I knew God had put her back in my life for a reason, because I remember God brought back to my remembrance when I was passing her house one day with my mother, uh, God bless her soul. Um, and I told my mom, the only woman I would marry right now was her. <laughs> so, you know, and that was so funny. And God brought it right back to my remembrance. And you see, when you see how God worked in your life, and I'm going to tell you, as, as, as a husband and wife, um, people say, oh, you can't be happy all the time. You can't, um, you, you can't have a, a happy marriage. You can't have a happy life. I cannot wait when I'm home till my wife get home. I ain't seen her all day. She at work all day. As soon as she tell me she headed out, man, I'm like a puppy waiting <laughs> for that door to open. I'm like a puppy. Is it five thirty yet? Is she gonna walk in the door yet? You know, I'm like, I'm like always edging, looking when she get home. And I thank God for the things before I got had my surgery and everything. You know. Um, I will always try to be home at the same time she get home because I want to see my wife. I ain't see her all day. Yeah, we talk on the phone all day. People, <laughs> and we still been doing that for yeah. how, for nine years. Yeah. We still every day talk to each other on the phone. Uh, periodically, she calling me throughout the day. I'm calling her throughout the day. And it's like the same old, you know, it's been like that since the day we were married. Mm -hmm. And I tell people, you can... People always got that five year. Oh room. yes. Oh, we after heard that five so years, much. let's see how your yes. how your marriage is. Yes. And then oh, after six years, I don't heard. It. After seven years, after not eight years, not nine years coming up. We had our thinking for a long time calling us the honeymooners <laughs> because marriage is what we make it. Yes, and yes. just as you know, and and we counsel couples all the time. Um, you know, how they're having problems and situations, but this is the one, bring back the spice to marriage, bring back the fire to marriage, bring back, remember how we was when we was dating, remember how you was with your spouse when you was dating, when you was trying to get to know each other on the phone, falling asleep. Remember those days? I remember. Falling asleep on the phone, didn't want to hang up. I mean, just constantly and talking and we have to spark romance in our relationships and because, waiting for them to come over yes yes <laughs> waiting for them and to come making sure house. that we call them and making sure mm -hmm. we say good night making sure we say i love you we've got to do this and love love is more than just saying i love you and then paul that we was in first corinthians the 13th chapter the seventh verse says love never gives up mm. never loses faith is always hopeful and endures through every situation. This is the amplified version that says, love bears up under anything and everything that comes. It ever is ever ready to believe the best of every person. It hopes and faithless under all circumstances and it endures everything without weakening. Mm -hmm. This is love. Yeah. Can I say this? Never give up. Can I say yes, this? Yes, go ahead, baby. And you, and, and this is for men and women, you should never, if you believe and you trust in God, and I hear people say, I trust in the Lord, and I trust in his word, and if you done entered into a marriage, and now you don't found something out on, on your husband, you don't find something about your wife you don't like. You don't find something about your husband you don't like. And now you're questioning, it was, did you make the right decision? But you chose him. He chose you. So my whole thing is this. If we really trust in God and we really believe God, you and you said you love that person. That's the person you said you love. When you stepped up there and you said, I do. Too. So if you have said that 
and you have done that and you guys are living together you gotta fight for what you want if that's the man you said you love that you cherish that you want to be with you gotta fight for what you want mm -hmm. you gotta fight for your spouse and i ain't talking about fist fight but you gotta fight in the war of prayer mm -hmm. you gotta fight and i and i'm gonna tell you uh when me and my wife first got married you know we we had issues with finances but we knew who the enemy was mm -hmm. And, you know, and sometimes we still have issues mm -hmm. with that, but we know who the enemy is and we know the enemy uses finance. Do you know, um, and I'm going to say this, and I've uh, learned this statistic, there's 95% of marriages break up because of finance. Yes. He said he was going to take care of me, but the Bible didn't say, the, the Bible said the man had a virtuous woman. And I can say right now, and I told my wife this, this is my virtuous woman. When I tell you she is virtuous, she is the most virtuous woman I ever seen in my life. Because why? Even to the point of I was, when I came out the hospital and couldn't do nothing for myself, mm -hmm. couldn't do nothing for myself, but my wife was right there by my side, picking me up, uh, cleaning the house, uh, do, uh, feeding the dog, doing stuff I used to do, you know, taking out the garbage, mm -hmm. stuff I used to, but I couldn't, right now, I can't do any of those things until I heal properly. But the good thing I, I saw, I saw in anything, is seeing my wife do those things and not even bicker about it. And sometimes I'll be like, well, I, I feel so bad sometimes. I'll be like, man, let me, want me to know you got to heal. Mm -hmm. You can't do those things right now, but you'll get better. And that's the whole thing we got to realize. Men, when you got a virtuous woman who ain't complaining, who ain't murmuring at you, who ain't nagging you every five minutes, but she, she right there for you when you need her. And you got to be the same for her. Yes. You got to make sure, still, you're the man of the house. You got to make sure that your house is rooted. Did I hear that? Did I say that right? Mm -hmm. You got to make sure your house is rooted, that your bills are being paid, and that things are being done in your home. You help you build the house. She makes your wife makes it a home. Mm -hmm. Y'all hear that? Your mm -hmm. wife makes it a home. Why? Because she's cleaning, she's cooking. You come in that house, and that house all smelled up with food, and your house smells good. Because you finna eat a hot meal and, and, and you got some drink and you got something to drink over there and why them not brought you your food and your food is all ready. Mm -hmm. That's what makes your house a home. Mm -hmm. If you up there fixing it yourself and you and your clothes are still dirty and you come <laughs> home, your wife is watching watching a movie eating bonbons, I feel for you. <laughs> I said, I thank God I ain't got it like that. But I thank God. But, you know, when you have a virtuous woman that will sit right there by your side and work with you, mm -hmm. that's when you know, that's when you know in your heart, your house then became a home. It's a home now because you got somebody by your side that's sticking by your side. No matter what, you may have a dollar to your name and that'd be the last dollar. And me and my wife done been there. Mm -hmm. And I can say this right in front of her you know we have been there we had no food in the refrigerator mm -hmm. but if we had each other do y'all hear me amen amen we ain't fussing fight why you ain't got no money and why you ain't did this we ain't even worry amen. about that as long as we was with each other and our lights were still on amen. and we can go in there and take some some chicken necks or something and make a meal <laughs> hey to god be the glory amen Amen. Go ahead. Someone had a question and was trying to come forth on the line. Um, there's a question says here, being a young married couple and not having married exemplified in our home or around us growing up, it seems at times we had to wing it. What are the best tools to have a blessed, happy and prosperous marriage? I, I can answer that, and that's through you praying together. Yes. Reading your Bible together. Together. 
not separately, but mm-hmm. reading your Bible together, praying together, having having that deep intimacy with one another. Sometimes it's good just to let your wife know or let your husband know how you feel mm-hmm. and what you what you going through. Mm-hmm. You know, and I, I'm glad my wife can come tell me what she going through and what she feeling. And and I can I can respond in a nice way and say, babe, you know, maybe just lay off of this for a little while. You know, do this. You know, I don't want you to all do all that yourself, you know? Mm-hmm. And sometimes, you know, we gotta we gotta ask each other for help. Yes. With each other. Mm-hmm. Remember, y'all growing, y'all gonna be together for a long time. Mm-hmm. A long time. Next year, I thank God it'll be 10 years for me and my wife. And has anything changed in us? No, we're the same. I mean, I don't we have fun together. We, we have fun together. together. I love being with her. Yes. I still I, I'm still like an ancient from it's been nine almost nine years, and I'm still be watching the mm-hmm. clock to see what time she get home. Cause I can be so I can be with my wife. You know, because then when she come home, I make a laugh. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, I ask her about her day, you know, and then we laugh some more, yeah. you know. And, and that's sometimes communication. She, she don't came communication. Home. Yeah, she done came yes. home. She done came home with a restless day mm-hmm. from all day dealing with the people at her job and doing all the stuff. You men, we got to make it easy for your wife. Wives, if you're not working and your husband come home from a hard day work, you should make it pleasant for him to be home. Make it a home for him. Mm-hmm. Because out there, he's out there ch- trying to keep a house. <laughs> trying to pay the bills. And man, if your wife working, she's out there making that money so you can keep your house. You can keep your car. You can keep your, you know, your little your, your little roof over your head and the lights you have on and the couch you sitting on and <laughs> that yes. TV you watching, yes. you know? So love her. Shoot her, you know? I wanted to read this um, since uh, my husband mentioned for husbands to love their wives. Ephesians 5 and 21 to 33 began to talk about the godly Christian relationship Mm -hmm. um, between husband and wife. And um, it said that for husbands, this means love your wives just as Christ loved the church. So first the wives, it says to submit Mm. to your husbands as to the Lord. For a husband is the head of his wife as Christ is the head of the church. As the church submits to Christ, so you wives submit to your husband in everything. Then it says, for husbands, this means love your wives, mm-hmm. just as Christ loved the church. So a lot of times we speak with couples that or wives that have a, a problem with submitting to husbands, mm-hmm. um, have a problem to submitting to the husband as being the head. Tell me a little story, baby, when we first got married. <laughs> um, okay, I'll go to that. Let me finish my go thought. Ahead, ahead. Um, submitting to the husband as being the head. And in submitting, you know, a lot of times, uh, it's it, it, and this can go both ways. If we feel that our spouse or our companion really appreciate us and really loves us, we don't have a problem with submitting. If we feel that our spouse um, taking account and all that we do, thank us for how we do it. I'm talking as a woman and as a, a husband, as a wife and as a husband. If we're showing that mutual concern, that mutual love, that mutual respect for each other, uh, um, there would not be a problem with wives submitting to the husbands because they know that the husband is accountable to God. Mm. The husband is accountable to God. You see, God is the head of the church, Christ the head of the church, and then the husband the head of the wife. So that husband is accountable to God. And when we feel that that mutual love is there, we have no problems with submitting. Why? Because we know that our husband has to give an account to God. That's why it's so important that we marry God-fearing men. 
We marry men that we know will have reverence for the Lord. We marry men that we know that are sold out. And that's what I always tell single women. Know that he is saved. Know that he is sanctified. Know that he is Holy Ghost filled. Because if he loves God, if he respects God, if he honors God, he won't do anything to hurt you. Why? Because he know in the priestly order that he has given account over his household mm -hmm. is in his priestly order that he has to give an account for the love that he even feel for his wife. That's why Solomon, and I want to read this because this go real deep. That's why in the song of Solomon, when he began to do the poem, he began to say his love for his wife, the Shulamite woman. So he's expressing his love. And a lot of people like to skip over this chapter. Oh, it's so this book because oh, it's so deep. It's about love. But remember, this was an analogy of the bridegroom and the bride, Christ and the church, how the husband is to love the wife. And it began, and this it got so deep, and, and he was so expressive of his love to his wife. That's why I don't understand why husbands feel like they cannot share their feelings. Oh, I'm a man, mm. I'm macho. Because Solomon was explicit in how he felt for his wife. And I, I documented some of this because I wanted to read it on tonight. And he was not ashamed of saying how much he loved her, how much he wanted to be with her, how much he wanted intimacy with her. He began to say, how lovely are your cheeks? Mm. This man started describing Jesus everything about his wife that he began to love. He said, your cheeks are lovely. Your earrings set them afire. Your neck is lovely. This man is describing his wife. They are enhanced by a string of jewels. How beautiful you are, my darling. Mm. How beautiful your eyes are like dove. Then he said, my dove is hiding behind the rocks behind the cliff. Let me see your face. This man was anxious to see his wife. Let me see your face. Let me hear your voice. For your voice is pleasant and your face is lovely. You are beautiful, my darling. This mm. is Song of Solomon. Y'all can go check me out now. You are beautiful, my darling, beyond words. Your eyes are like doves behind your veil. Wow. Your hair falls in waves like a flock of goats winding down the slopes of Gilead. Don't turn your eyes away for they empower, they overpower me. He's saying, don't even look at me, baby, because I'm taken over, taken by your beauty. You yeah. tell me I ain't going to fall in line if I have a husband that is giving me sweet nothings and telling me how beautiful I am. Yes, I'll be submissive. I'll cook your dinner, I'll iron your clothes. I'll go to the wash house if I have to. I'll go to the <laughs> store shopping by myself. Why? Because I have a man that truly appreciates me and, eval and values me and compliments me and showing me love and knows how to express his love. And he's still a man's man. He began to talk about the smile that is flawless, that your teeth are white, that your lips are like scarlet ribbon, that Ooh. your cheeks are rosy. And you, I mean, this man went deep. And he said, you captured my heart, my treasure, my bride. You Ooh. hold it hostage with one glance of your eyes. Your love delights me, my treasure, my bride. Your love is better than wine. Your perfume more fragrant than spices. Your clothes are scented. Honey and milk are under your tongue. This He's going on and on about how much he loved his wife. And tell me, women, we ain't going to submit to a man that's, I mean, praising us, that's saying how much they love us, that's embracing us. Hallelujah. Woo, yes, we're going to uh, show our appreciation. And it wasn't only from the man's uh, point of view of him expressing his love. Here it is now, the wife begin to talk about her husband 
And she began to say, kiss me and kiss me again, for your love is sweeter than wine. Your, 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 um, how pleasing is your mm. fragrance? Your name is like the spreading fragrance of sin and oils. You are so handsome, my love, pleasing beyond words. He escorts me to the banquet hall. It's obvious how much he loves me. Look at this. She's saying, I'm weak under his love. His left arm is under my head mm. and his right arm embraces me. My lover is mine and I am his. Whoop, there it is. <laughs> <laughs> when we can be that expressive, oh my God. If we can show our love to that extent wow. for the one that we are with, it ain't going to be no arguing and fighting. Mm -mm. It ain't going to, because why? We're complimenting each other. What's this thing about love? It's showing strong affection, one for another, being in agreement, loving each other at all times, not getting mad and angry. We fussing and fighting. No, love is, that. that's not love. Let's look at the scripture, 1 Corinthians 15, that's love. So apply that to our marriage, apply that to our relationships, apply that to the ones that we are engaged and spouse to, and we're getting ready to marry. We've got to promise. And this woman, and she finished in Song of Solomon, she began to say, then she started talking to the women of Jerusalem. She said, promise me, O women of Jerusalem, not to awaken love until the time is right. Wow. You see that? Don't not until it don't wake it up until it's ready, until the time is right. When we know that this is the person that God has yoked us with, it's time for this love to come alive. Mm. When we know that this is the person that God we took covenant under the eyes of God and we shared our vows with. That's a covenant that we made before God. So we're declaring our love on our wedding day. Mm. We're declaring our love every day of the week. Why? Because we are in love. Yeah. So not I love you. No, I'm in love with you. This book showed and exemplified I am in love with you. She woke up one day. Her man was not there. She went out on the streets looking for her love. Y'all read Song of Solomon. Reading in the New Living Translation, you'll see what I'm talking about. She went out on the streets. I've got to find him. I can't live without him. What's wrong with professing our love? Mm. What's wrong with displaying our love and being emotional with our love? Because we love them. It ain't no game of, I got to guess how much you love me. No, you tell me. How, show me how mm. much you love me. She began to tell the women of Jerusalem um, not to wake it before it's time. And this is why she said, because love is as strong as death. Wow. Love is as strong as death. As death. It's jealousy as enduring as the grave. Mm. Love flashes like fire, the brightest kind of flame. Many waters cannot quench love, nor can rivers drown it. Isn't that something? Wow. Love is still there. That's why, Noel, we're able to give exes another chance because even though that we said we can disconnect it, if that love is still there, we're, we're willing to rejoin together and make it work. That's love. Mm. It's a flame, it's a fire. It's a thin, like, like, like that movie, it's a thin line between love and hate. That's that same scripture. It says it's jealousy as enduring as the grave. Mm. Because we so in love, don't let me see you cheating on me. That uh, Something snaps. Because that love is a, a binding cord. It's a yoke that wasn't meant, especially in marriage, to be tainted. Because remember, when we joined in holy matrimony, we joined as one. And we made vows as one and we became as one. So we can't let anything come in and separate and depart the unity that God has joined together. Hallelujah. Thank you. Come on for us. Somebody trying to come forth on the line. Come on, jump in. Hello? Yes, I can hear you. So I have a question. So how do you submit to someone? 
someone who's the opposite of that. Like, you're the affectionate one, but your partner is not. And also, how do you submit when your partner allows the third party to run your marriage and they're not running it? Like, how can you submit to something like that? Okay, good question. How can we submit when our husband is not living, first of all, um, in a way that's pleasing God? Because as the head of the home, that's what he should be, the head without a third party coming in. My first thing to say to that is that when we are uh, married, and if we marry someone that's not saved, shame on you. I'm not just saying to you, but that's why it's so important that, cause that, you know, we say we don't wanna submit, but when we said I do, we were submitting. And we're submitting to say that I'm taking this man mm -hmm. as my head. I'm taking this man as the head over me. And, and at that point, we say, I do. That's submission. Because it's in the word that we've got to honor them and we've got to respect them. And if we marry them in a condition where they were not even in the right place with God, then shame on us. Mm -hmm. Because when we say, I do. That means that I'm submitting in, and the scriptures say in everything that the wife has to submit. Now, if we're in a situation where we got married and neither one of us was saved and then one of us got saved, and now the scripture that comes in, 1 Corinthians 7 and 14, that a sanctified wife will sanctify her husband. Mm -hmm. So that the holiness of a believing wife, the holiness of the believing wife would also bring holiness to the husband. Why? Because the husband is seeing this new life. The husband is seeing what it is that it takes and also vice versa. The wife is now seeing that the husband is saved and the righteousness of the husband. Now they want to partake of that holiness. Mm. So in um, not submitting, we have to rethink that because when we're already in marriage, we're saying that we've got to go by God's law and God's law is to submit because he is the head. Now, if he's not doing what he should do as the head, then he's accountable to God. That's the next tier. So here's God, Christ, here's the husband, here's the wife. You're doing what God say do. Don't say, how can I submit? Do as the Bible said. It said submit. So I'm submitting. And if he's not doing what he should do, guess what? He's accountable to God. So you don't have blood stain on your hands because you're doing what the Bible say. Now, in trying to get your husband to a place in God where he is submissive, that's and when my husband said about the tools, start, come on, let's have Bible study. Let's read the Bible. Open up the Bible to him. Show him where is the sanctity of marriage. Get scriptures together and write them down and show and write them and show him the sanctity of marriage, of how when you leave your wife, you're to bound to your, your mother, you're to bound to your wife. Show him in scripture that it's not supposed to be a third party, that is you and your husband. Not a mama, not a grandma, not children should come between what God has joined together. Why? Because you are one. So instead of fighting him naturally, fight him in the spirit, fight him mm -hmm. with the word. Bring the word to him. Let him see it for himself. Let him see for himself that you ain't making it up and you just being a nagging wife because he ain't at the place where you want him to be. No, show him that he is accountable to God. Make sure that you um, battle in scripture. Mm -hmm. Not that you're going back debating the word, but you're showing him in scripture. So he's not saying, oh, this is just what my wife said. No, no this is what God say. And then when you open up that scripture to him, the, the word say to them that don't know is sin. But once we know, glory to God, we're held accountable. And then as you show the scripture to him, you are praying for him that God will bring condemnation through the word. Yes. That God will change his heart and change his life and change his mind and change his mindset. So you've got to change the way that you battle. You've got to change the way that you war. And you've got to do it with showing him the word of God. He can't fight God. His arms too short to bite the boss with God. He may try to rebel. He may try to resist. But guess what? You're praying for that condemnation to come. You're praying for him to be um, all that God has called him to be. 
So right. your submission can be easier. It'll be smooth sailing. Did I answer your question? Yes, you did. Okay. And we can talk more about it. We can talk but more about it. We'll about, go offline. I, we'll talk more about can it. Can I say this? And mm -hmm. I, I want to bring this up. What about those women who say, well, my husband, he ain't doing this and he ain't doing that. Those that are on the conference, I'm sorry, babe. Can you please mute your line? We hear some movement unless you're trying to come forth. You know, what about those who say, well, he, he's not doing this and he's not doing that and he's not, he, you know, he, he's not making this happen and he's not doing those mm -hmm. things. So why should I have to submit to him? Mm -hmm. You know, and uh, I'm, I'm paying all the bills. I'm doing this and that. Mm -hmm. What do you, you know, what, what do you say to those women? It's the same thing. Your accountability is to God. As long as you're doing as God told you to do, God said for you to submit. So you're not fighting up against him. You're praying with him and you're praying for him. Mm -hmm. And you're not taking the ownership of you're wearing the pants and you're supposed to be the head because you're wearing the pants and you're paying the bills. No, a wife is to submit to her husband. And if this and y'all not even married yet and you feel like you can't submit to him and y'all not married, there's a problem. There's a problem. Mm -hmm. Before going into marriage, you should be able, you should already be submissive. How about that? Start practicing. Mm -hmm. Start practicing. You should already be submissive. Then you won't have any issues because you can submit. But if you find it where you can't submit, then there's another problem. What is the problem that you can't submit to the man you about to make your head? Mm -hmm. Come on now. Wow. And that, and that and that's true. And husbands, you know, you supposed to love your wife. And I heard my wife say that. You're supposed to love your wife. Cherish her. And and I heard like uh, all the things King Solomon said mm -hmm. about loving. Mm -hmm. You know, Remember, you remember back in the day they had the Mac Daddy always had them little words. <laughs> that that's who King Solomon kind of remind me of <laughs> when he talked about his wife, you know. Yeah. And I and what I, I I'm I can say I'm I'm one that talk about my wife all the time, and everybody know who my wife is because I talk about her all the time. Even when she's not around, I talk about my wife. So my whole thing is, hold on, hello. Someone is trying to come forward. Okay. Okay. Forward. So basically what I'm saying is it's good to it's good medicine to let your wife know how you feel about her, how you cherish her, how you how you think, baby, I thank you. You know, what's wrong with saying, babe, I, I thank you for cooking me this meal today. Man, that, you know, and if the food tastes good, tell your wife. <laughs> you know, let her know her food tastes good. Man, that was a good meal you cooked. Man, oh, you know, oh, that was a good movie you put on. Oh, man, you look nice tonight. Mm -hmm. oh, baby, you looking good. And what's wrong with that? And I know, like, my wife. She uh she lost 36 pounds <laughs> and I told her, I said, You looking good. I mean, you really, you really looking, I mean, really not, and I'm proud of you. And so it's you know, it's good to tell your your spouse those things. Cause they don't know how you feel unless you say it. Mm -hmm. Amen. Communication, communication. Go ahead. Someone's trying to come forth. Yes. Um, to those young couples, they just don't want to tie down. Um, they're trying to leave their options open and they feel like marriage will bound them so they can't do their own thing. Mm -hmm. um, when we are truly in love with someone, we want we will to commit our lives to them. Mm -hmm. 
So what's this thing about love? This thing about love is it's a lasting relationship. I'm not, and, and, and you know, it's legalities. They don't want to commit because, oh, what if it don't work out? I'm still young. I need to experience life. I need to, so maybe they're not ready to be married. Yeah. And if they're not ready to be married, don't get married. And don't live together. And don't live, don't shack up, don't live together. If you don't appreciate or love me enough to put a ring on my finger, what I'm shacking up for. So we have to, um, women and men have to value our own bodies enough to say, you're not, I'm not your spare tire. I'm not, you're going to come to me whenever you feel like you need your affection, your ego stroke. I'm not the one. I'm marriage material. And until the other party says, uh, make that standard, then it'll always be that way. They'll be 18 years not married. Why? Because no one ever said, we're going to do this or it's not going to be a relationship. Someone has to come to the place to say, hey, if you've been with me for eight years, you must, you must be in this for the long haul. You must be in it for the long haul. So um, those that are still, and we know couples right now today, 20 years not married. And what happened? The other one died and they have no rights to nothing because there was no legal paper. So, you know, love is commitment. Love is saying that I want to be with you forever because I have such a strong affection that I can't see my life with no one else. And if a person is not willing to commit then maybe that's not the one that God has for you. I'm going to say this too, to add on to what my wife just said, you know, if, you know, that that's a big statement to say that a marriage, uh, is, is, you know, is, is, well, I don't need to, I don't need a piece of paper. It's not the piece of paper. It's the thing that you want to honor in front of God, mm -hmm. that you want your marriage honorable in God's eyesight, because marriage is honorable in God's eyesight. And a lot of times people uh, uh, want to, they get married or they don't get married and they just live together for all this time. And they find out later, oh, you don't wasted eight, nine, 10 years. And that person, and, and I'm gonna tell you, there's not one woman that stay with a man all that time and not want to be married. Amen. Because if she don't stay with you for eight years, she looking sooner or later, she going to put that ring on my finger. That's our dream. We want to be married, have children, the perfect family. We're not here to waste time. We want the, a commitment. Mm -hmm. She may say, yeah, I agree with you. Uh -huh. <laughs> but sooner or later, it's going to come to a, it's going to come to a point. Well, you know, I think we should get married since we're already together. We we living together. We living in the same mm -hmm. house. We already uh, uh, in a relationship. And you know we don't even we don't got kids together, yeah. and 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 we might well just go ahead and get married. Four or five kids, no. Four or five no, kids. No, 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 no. Come on now, you know that's not right. That's fornication. Mm -hmm. So you're not doing what God, God never meant for a man and a woman just to be girlfriend and boyfriend forever, or just be dating forever, and y'all living together but y'all dating. Come on now. That's not of God, you know. When a man findeth a wife, the Bible says, "If he findeth a what good thing, a good thing, that means and what, obtains favor my, with the Lord, and obtains Thank favor you, with the Lord." When I found my wife back and got back with her, <laughs> and we was together, we was dating for six months. Mm -hmm. In them six months, I, I already made up my mind. I made up my mind. I'm going it to get this ring. Six. Yeah, we it was, was dating in January. Yeah. I think he proposed in February. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and we was married in July. Yeah, we was married in July. <laughs> but I didn't. I knew what I wanted. <laughs> and I knew if I want her, I have to put a ring on her finger. Amen. That's the respect that you show you, the woman that you say you love. Amen. That you put a ring on her finger. Mm -hmm. Uh, uh, other than that, let her go. If you're going to play games with her, and if she's going to play games with you, talking about she don't want to be married now and tied down and all that, sooner or later, sooner or later, it's going to come to that. Sooner or later, either you might have a man, I, you know, he's dating, dating you or dating a woman, and he, 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 he just, you know, now he wants to pop the question because 
okay, I see that she's with me and she, and, and she's the right one for me, but the woman still want to party. She still want to have her way. I got, you're going to take me away from my girls. <laughs> yeah, I can't hang out with my buddy, my besties no more. And I can't, and then the guy, you know, I can't hang out with my fellas no more. I can't do this no more. Or oh, you're going to be the old ball and chain. See, you got to think of all those things. And see, if you're a true man of God, when you go looking for somebody, when you go looking for that wife, you looking for a wife. You ain't looking for a girlfriend. Mm -hmm. You ain't looking for somebody you just going to be, you know, be with for a short time. You looking for somebody. And you'll know right off if she want to be with you or not, whether she want to be married or if she just want to be somebody that want to just sleep around and sleep with you. Mm -hmm. And that's that, That's not what you want, uh, you know. And and the same thing with if a guy coming around, all he want he got you, and then he got another woman over there. He's mm -hmm. saying, and you looking at his phone, and they all this thing popping up with different women. Come on, now you know he ain't the one. Amen. I don't care how fine he look. I don't care how sexy she is and her Coca-Cola body. bro. that ain't the one for you. Amen. I hope you get what I'm saying tonight. Yes. Because we, we talking real. Mm -hmm. When a man look for what he looking for a wife. Mm -hmm. When you go looking, you go look for a wife, not a girlfriend. Look for you a wife. And make sure. And don't just men... Don't just accept anything. Women too. Women, don't just accept anybody. Yeah, that's right. And if you're a true woman of God, let him show you. Let him show you. I ain't say, oh, you got he got to take you to Red Lobster and all that stuff. No, let him show you <laughs> who he truly is in God. Yes. He, he'll be one to get you to go to church. Mm, he'll right. be one to get you to read the Bible. Let's mm -hmm. pray together. Come on, let's, let, let, let's, let's talk about the Lord a little. Where you, where you stand and seeing? Yeah. And, and me and my wife did all of this. Mm -hmm. Where you see yourself standing, you know, and uh, we start a relationship. What, what you looking at? What's going to happen with this? Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. You know, people say, oh, you, it's just the first date. Yeah, it is. that's when you need to know. Whether you are wasting your time. Amen. Praise God. So don't waste your time mm -hmm. on somebody that's not going, there's not time wasted. Because you'll be there eight years and saying, he still ain't proposed yet. Mm -hmm. She still, she still talking about she ain't ready to get married yet. And you'll still be waiting. Amen. Amen. So that answered the question, what about people who tell you they want to marry you in the future, but are always too busy for you? Then you answered the question. Yeah. Amen. They have to know your value and your worth. And in the future, you may not be there, especially if God sing you who God has for you. Praise the Lord. Amen. Okay, let me give them a little nugget on that. Mm -hmm. And this is for the women to know about a man, uh, for men to know about a woman. A woman wants you to be interested in her and if you let's say you love her and you want to be with her she gonna want to know do you want to know about me and i'm gonna just make it so simple as this she wants you to know her chairs you know what that means her chairs her chairs are the things she like what is her favorite color how does what how does she put her lipstick on Oh, come on, Solomon. Jesus. <laughs> How does she walk? How does she look mm -hmm. when she stares at you? How do her eyes look at you? You should know everything you can learn about that woman. When I got back with my wife, I learned everything about her. I watched her. Not just talking, but I watched her. Mm -hmm. I seen how she carried herself. I see how she walked around. I see how she talked. I see how she uh, do little funny things with her lips. I see how she laughed. And when she smiled, how it make me feel inside. Oh, you make me blush. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. No her chairs. And I ain't talking about the chairs she's sitting on. I'm talking about her mm -hmm. chairs. How she feels about herself. How she carries herself. 
if she a true lady because you know a true lady ain't gonna be showing her good all right come on now she don't have to show her coca-cola shape us, us. she don't have to be, uh, be all Ooh, i gotta look fine and so he can reveal a little something so he could be interested in me you don't even have to do that Amen. because if he if he sees the true woman the true virtue of you he'll see you for what you truly are Amen. a virtuous woman praise god a real woman of god thank you Jesus. he'll be attracted to the anointing even on your life yes i hope that helps somebody tonight Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Well, y'all, I got my Solomon. <laughs> God is good. And he's worthy of every praise. And we just thank God for um, everyone that joined on tonight. Is there anyone on the conference call that have a comment before we close out tonight? Praise God. How y'all doing, Apostle and Pastor Reed? We are wonderful. God bless. I truly enjoy tonight's talking. I just want to let you guys know that you are very encouraging. Even for those like uh, like me who are are uh, stepping out of marriage, but do look forward to actually getting into another one. You know, and so things that I didn't know when I first got into my first marriage, I'm learning now, and I'm grateful that you know you guys are also aiding in that process. So, just want to say that. Amen. Pray, thank you so much. Praise Amen. the Lord. Amen. 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 God has placed us here um, to be an encourager and to motivate and to let us know that we can live happily in marriages yes. and not accept what people depict on our lives. Oh, after this many years or that many years, it's going to do this. There's no. My marriage is going to be everything that God has ordained it to be. So even with our own words, we have to speak life into our marriages and our situations. Thank you so much for your comments tonight. And I just want to say one more thing and leave y'all with this. If you're married already and you got a relationship, if you're thinking about getting married to someone and, and take this along with you, please keep your family, keep your homegirls, Keep your homeboys, all of them. I, I don't. The way you see it on TV, the homeboy always running to the, his homeboys, telling them about his man. Keep your marriage between you and your wife. Y'all discuss that mm -hmm. because that's your marriage. But if you're having problems and you need to talk to somebody, here you go. You got your counterpart. You know, Amen. talk to them. Amen. Tell them how you feel. And men, we got to be able to listen and give a good response. Yes. Because why? Your wife is looking for that. Um, men, you you have a fiance. She coming to you and telling you her problem. She needs to hear that everything going to be all right. Yes. That's all. Amen. She wants to know everything going to be all right. And when your husband, your, your husband or your fiance come to you, you should come with open arms, ready to listen. He wants you to be his Delilah. And I ain't saying Delilah in a bad way. I'm saying Delilah in a good way. He wants you to be his Delilah. Why? Because Delilah was, when she had Samson, she was soothing to him. Yeah. She was loving to him. Mm -hmm. And that's why he kept coming back because he kept getting the same thing every time he came back. Amen. And that's what, a like I said tonight, a wife makes a home. A husband builds a house. And I, I ain't talking about building it naturally. I'm talking about he builds the house spiritually. And the wife make it what he needs it to be a home. So when he walks in that door, grab your husband. Say, honey, I love you. Thank you. Thank you, baby, mm -hmm. for going out making that paycheck today. <laughs> if your wife come home, a hard day, honey, thank you. 
for going out and making money for your for your family and being that virtuous woman. Come on. Amen. Come on, men. Come on, women. Show them love. Don't worry about uh, Valentine's Day all the time. Valentine's Day should be every day for your marriage. Amen. Uh, we're going to close with prayer tonight. And Father, we just thank you yes, God. for this teaching on tonight. We thank you for those that connected with us, not only in the natural, but in the spirit. Yes, God. And God, we pray that you would bless their relationships. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we pray love in every heart on tonight. Lord God, that we will show the love of God in appreciating, respecting, honoring, and cherishing those that you have placed in our lives. And now, God, we bind everything that comes to distract, yes, to God. destroy, to deter our, us from our relationships, yes, that comes to block every blessing, mm. that comes to interfere with the priest manhood, the call that is on the men of God. Yes, God. Lord God, that they will all be in their rightful place, Thank oh you, God, Jesus. as the head seeking after you, yes, oh Jesus. God, as the wife submit unto them. Yes, we God. thank you, Lord God, for those that are engaged, Lord God, those that are preparing to be married, yes, those that are even single, God, that are on the call and mm. want to know even before you bring them, even before you bring her, yes. how to prepare. Lord, they're preparing now before you even send the spouse so when they come they will be ready and we yes, thank God. you for saved sanctified holy ghost filled, fire baptized yes, men and women of god that will come and present themselves as the bridegroom that will come and present themselves as the bride thank we you, thank you and we bind every struggle every stronghold yes, every calamity every affliction that's trying to oppress these relationships god yes, and that god. your spirit will abide and the enemy flee in the name of, the Jesus. name of Jesus. We call down peace now in every relationship. We call down peace peace. Lord God, that your power will prevail. Thank we you, thank you, God, that you are that God in light, and we will continue to trust, lean, and depend on you yes, in Jesus. Jesus' name. Yes, Hallelujah. Lord. Amen. Let love abide. Yes, Let love abide. Let the love of God abide. Hallelujah. We just thank God Talk for everyone that has joined the conference on tonight. Um, don't forget to like and share this video if you felt that um, there were principles that other people could benefit from. Please make sure that you share it and you like it as yes. well. Um, again, we're not only on Facebook, but we're also on the conference call. So if you would like to call in, you can do that or email us at United, un, excuse me, email us at Unified Love Ministry at gmail.com. Um, those that want one-on-one -on -one sessions with me and my husband, um, you can fill out the form on our website, the fleministry.org forward slash counseling. Um, submit the form and I gave the, oh. um, the, the fleministry.org forward slash counseling and you'll be able to submit the form. Uh, we also put a link for the Love Dare Challenge and this is a 40-day love journey. Um, the link is in the um, the header. So if you click on the link, it's 40 days. It's a challenge. So you take that and you and your spouse and each day it shows a way to love your spouse and to show and exemplify love as God have for us as married couples, um, couples that are coming together and married, couples that are dating, that are potentially to be married. It is a love dare. So I dare you to show love. There's a link there that you can get the PDF. Join us again. Uh, we're going to be here on February the 21st at 7 p.m. We're trying, well, we're going to do bi-weekly. So not next Wednesday because we know next Wednesday is Valentine's Day. Happy Valentine's Day in advance. And the following Wednesday, the 21st, we will meet you here at 7 p.m. What's this thing called love? Mm. Show love, exemplify love, and they will know the love of God through you. Good night. God bless you. I like the way you smile, you know. We love you. Look at my Solomon. All right. Keep it coming. Look, keep it coming. Keep it coming. God bless you all. We love you and thank you for love joining. You. Good night. Good night.